Hello, my name is Rafael Contreras Galindo. I'm the section leader of Genomic Stability of Chromosome Biology at the Hormel Institute and the Amazonic Cancer Center at the University of Minnesota. Uh, the project is named Central Merge Defects, Chromosome Instability and SIGAS Activation in Scleroderma Fibrosis. Can you describe for us why this project uh, is exciting or promising for people who are living with scleroderma? I think this project is exciting and important for people living with scleroderma because we are trying to understand the cause of this scarring and thickening of the skin that happens in these patients. We have collected the data that uh, indicate that uh, what could be the causes that are producing scleroderma. And if we are able to identify these causes, probably we can tackle with new drugs and try to cure that disease. Amazing. What would you say is a particularly innovative aspect of this particular project? Well, I think uh, this particular research, we are creating models to study changes in centromers and chromosomes, how these uh, changes can affect fibrosis or thickening of the skin. So we have created a model to delete centromers and cause chromosome changes using CRISPR-Cas9. So we are using this method in cell models of fibroblasts, and we are also creating skin organoids or skin organs. So in that way, we can measure how all these changes affect the thickening of the organ or the skin. How does the work that you're doing um, with this project now follow on from work you've done so far in your career? Oh, I have um, focused my career research to study central mercy human disease. So thanks to the Scleroderma Foundation, the National Scleroderma Foundation, uh, I received the Mark Flappon Award to study how is the role centromer changes that I have seen these patients can produce scleroderma. With that, uh, thanks to that funding, I was able to finish and extend my research. Um, this is now published in a very recent paper in Nature Communications. And today, like the research that I'm proposing is a continuation, a follow up of these findings. But this time I would like to see how these changes that I'm seeing in the patients, if they activate a particular pathway that is called SIGA system pathway that is involved in fibrosis. So it's a continuation of starting for central heart defects. How can this affect um, the activation of uh, pathway involving inflammation and fibrosis. What got you interested in scleroderma research initially? Uh, well, my I'm very interested in centromers, and uh, it was thanks to centromer patients that we were able to study centromers. Why? Because these patients produce anti-centromer antibodies, and they were discovered several decades ago. Like using these antibodies, we were able to localize, to locate the centromers in the chromosome, understand their function in cell division and chromosomal segregation. So most, most of the work in centromer research is uh, thanks to these antibodies. What uh, would you consider to be your most significant research achievement to date? I think um, over the years, every part, every finding in my research have add up to the most important contribution that I have so far in the scleroderma field. One might be uh, understand what is the cell source and the, and the cell trigger that produce proteins that triggered the production of centromer antibodies in this disease. So I'm showing that the fibroblasts, they can uh, expose and, and exhibit centromer proteins, and that can be recognized by the immune system to generate the antibody production. And second, and side by side, 
is like also having these centromere defects can affect the chromosomes. And when there are ruptures in these chromosomes that could uh, induce fibrosis or inflammation in the disease. So you've done this exciting work in centromeres. You're continuing this line now with this line of research as you kind of look forward in 10 years from now, what do you hope to be working on? Hmm. I think there is three important things that I would like to study. I would be screening new molecules, other drugs that can interfere with the production of fibrosis in a scleroderma. Second, I would be screening environmental hazards and chemicals that can produce centromere abnormalities and can be linked to scleroderma. And something that I really like, uh, like working with the stem cell biology is to create models so the patients can reprogram the stem cells and that can replenish all the scar tissue with healthy cells and clear out the disease. Um, what do you consider to be the biggest issues in scleroderma research today? In recent years, many investigators have come up with very interesting findings comparing to previous, previous years. Um, so I think that's very good. Um, perhaps what we need is like have more collaboration between the different scleroder scleroderma centers around the country and in two other countries. What do you think are some of the most promising research directions in scleroderma? Well, right now I'm very excited with uh, clinical trials that are offering to treat fibrosis, like the interleukin-6 trials. I think that uh, targeting interferon beta is also a very good option. And hopefully uh, we can target also what I'm proposing, the SIGA system pathway, which could block interleukin-6 and interferon beta at the same time. Okay, big blue sky question. But if you had unlimited resources, what problem would you want to solve? I would create a biobank. A biobank with cell sources from scleroderma patients that would have uh, endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and stem cells or inducible uh, pluripotent cells that we can differentiate in other types of tissues. And if we can have this biobank having the genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, or on clinical data from all these patients, that would be an invaluable source for research that will speed up uh, a lot this, uh, this effort that we are all doing in finding the cure. As you look at the exciting work you've done, what would you consider to be your best work and why? Okay, one of the best work that I have done was to develop um, tools to study centromere sequences and cytogenetic analysis to picture all these chromosomes. And this is because with, those, with all these tools, we were able to study for the first time centromere in scleroderma and other diseases. Uh, this was challenging to study centromeres because the centromere sequence was the missing part of the Human Genome Project. Just um, very few months ago, the centromere sequence was completed. So we have already showed that using these tools that we developed, we have shown that the centromere sequence is not just a sea of repetitive DNA or junk DNA. It also can influence the function of the centromeres and the chromosomes. So that's a very important finding in our research. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the important work being supported through our peer-reviewed research grants program. We're incredibly grateful to our team of investigators for the work they do to discover the cause, understand the mechanism, and overcome scleroderma forever. The National Scleroderma Foundation is the leading nonprofit supporter of peer-reviewed research in the country. Since our founding in 1998, the foundation has committed over $30 million to scleroderma research. The need to accelerate the pace of discovery in scleroderma is urgent, and we're proud of our leadership role in advancing scientific innovation. Our program prioritizes scientific merit and provides funding for both early career and established investigators. 
By leveraging the integrity of the peer review process, we can ensure that we are supporting the most impactful science in the scleroderma research community. And when you invest in the Foundation's research program, you can ensure that your resources are being carefully stewarded every step of the way. Thank you for your support of our research programs, and thank you to our investigators for making a difference in the lives of people living with scleroderma.